tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Guys, give it up. Keep clapping for Kyle Mooney and Dave. Let's hear it. It's, Thanks so much for being here. That feels very nice. The hand slap? Like what you just did? Oh no, just people like... Well, do it again, guys. Keep it up. <laughs> Kyle's, Kyle's always fishing for that second round of applause. Wait, what does it sound like again? <laughs> They'll do it if I... No, they, they won't do it, apparently. <laughs> you guys want to do it? Just give no, it a round don't. of applause. <laughs> no. See, this is... I can't, I can't do this, Kyle. Get used to it, bud. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on the film. I was, uh, you know, telling you how much I liked it backstage. I thought it's really funny, it's really beautiful, and uh, it's gorgeously filmed. And what I loved about it is that I've been following your work, I think, since before SNL and the videos that you made with Good Neighbor. And um, I felt like I was watching a more sort of human version, uh, an a very human, elongated version of a character, versions of characters that you've been doing for quite some time. Someone who's just a little bit on the outside of, of everything that everybody knows about, whether it's pop culture or sports or anything like that. Did it feel, were you conscious of that while you guys were writing it or was it something much more? Maybe, maybe a little, I mean, I, I think, uh, I, I suppose the adage is true that you write what you know and, uh, at times, I, I feel like an outsider, like the character James. A lot of these characters that I do, I guess, tend to um, try to act confident as if they, they know something about a subject, but clearly they either don't or there's some sort of emotional thing underneath. Uh, but yeah, that's, I just, that's who I, I, I am. I'm, I'm obsessive like James. I, um, I'm awkward at parties like James. The only difference is you're a lot stronger than James. In real life. We didn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we didn't think the character would be believable so if got, we wrote it as strongly. Yeah, yeah. So we, as strong as I am in real life. So you wrote you get a little lean for the for the part. Super weak. Um, yeah. Actually, the 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 role required uh, me eating noodles, so I was on kind of just a steady pasta diet throughout. <laughs> well, where did that come about? Why did you have to eat noodles? Well, the, the, a portion of the film takes place with my character um, kind of living in seclusion, and uh, they make pasta there. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I, I derailed that. Kyle was saying uh, you were talking about just the, uh, the honesty of, of the characters that you like to embody, which I've always been very impressed by Kyle's ability to absorb um, all of our our influences, uh, friends that we grew up with, people that we went to school with, and, and kids that we found on YouTube that um, are maybe a little obscure and have their own homemade shows. And the nuances of these, these kids, their mannerisms, I, I, I can see Kyle absorb the things that we love and think are, are funny or honest or interesting about um, vulnerable people and insecure people and uncomfortable people and uh I, i'm just always impressed by his ability to m take those mannerisms and m make them feel honest and not too tongue-in-cheek because yeah. we you know it, it, it if it feels like you're making fun of them it leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth but there's like a, a fine line that i think kyle ends up on the right side of um where we're not poking fun as much as we're enjoying and embracing these uh, outsider, you know, type of, of personalities. Well, this film is never, so. this film is never poking fun, which is one thing that I loved about it, specifically the party scene that you sort of mentioned, you know, being awkward at parties, finding a way to make him funny and awkward, but at the same time, everybody else kind of accepting and understanding of him for the most part is a much different way than most comedies would go. With, with that scene. And I'm curious if you guys shot, when you were shooting the film, how aware and on top of tone you were consistently. And if you shot sort of different versions of the film sometimes yeah, because we you weren't sure. We definitely did. Uh, but with that being said, like from the get go, the uh, kind of M MO was always like, let's play this as honest and, and, and as realistic and as earnestly as possible just to do the story justice. And, and we felt like the comedy was inherent in the script and if we just played it real you know we'd potentially get those laughs uh, there, with that being said we did yeah we did do various takes like yeah. some broader some 
uh, just more dramatic. Because uh, you never fully know, and maybe some people do feel this way, that, that they know 100% from the beginning exactly what's special about every scene in, in their film. It's like the Coens and that's it. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like the, <laughs> yeah. the only people who know how to do that. Right. But we we have made videos this way our whole lives where it's like, we have something fun here. We have a general a cool idea maybe or an interesting character and, and maybe we have a full script, but it's like, let's feel that freedom of maybe we'll find something even more interesting or even funnier if it, if it calls for that in the moment. And in this film... We generally were like, let's scene by scene, if we can, if this exchange between these characters feels honest, that's paramount. That's number one. And then number two, if we have a little time to find an extra joke in here or do a take that's maybe a little sillier, just in case in the edit we discover like, oh man, we want this movie to be a lot funnier than it is right now. Luckily, the what we assumed ended up being relatively correct and that we just wanted it to feel emotional and sincere and that there would be a you few You gotta jokes. see some of these outtakes. You gotta <laughs> see these outtakes. I uh, love outtakes, bro. I love outtakes. <laughs> we gotta hook them up. Okay, Wait, great. Give me the reel. Uh, is there a gag reel? Is there a blooper reel? I Please. think there might be, there might actually be I think one. someone that is making cutting. something. Uh, if you make a joke, the Step Brothers like gag reel is still I, one I of my favorite I've, things. I've watched yeah. the Anchorman 2, yeah, gag cut or I, I never know what are Blo- like bloopers what, blooper reel they're bloopers and it was very funny YouTube recommends them for me all the time and I always it's, that's my clickbait I'm it's, like oh okay yeah you, it's fail proof yeah uh, I'm curious you know when we're talking about the tone just one more question on this there's a great cameo near the end of the film I don't want to give away who that is they're not on the poster or anything is that someone that we can talk about in the in the home with you Andy oh okay I wasn't sure if that was like uh, public oh, or not oh. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Fine. yeah 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 so Andy Andy Sanders, or else I ruined it <laughs> Who's wonderful, you know, I, I think comedically he has a tendency to go f- fairly big and you sure. have him playing a somewhat big comedic character but very subdued, I think more subdued than I've ever seen Sandberg play some someone like that. Did you know that you were going to do that with that camera or was that another situation where you got on set and you were like, let's see what works? I mean, we definitely told him about the tone of the film and we're just like, we, we just don't, again, just don't want it to feel too uh, tongue-in-cheek and the more honest that the that, that exchange felt. Yeah, also, you know, Lonely Island produced the film, so so they saw the script early on and, and just had a good sense of what we were going for. Um, with that being said, again, yeah, there there is probably a version of that whole... Uh, that is, an, yeah, there's a version where, like, of Andy like being a, extremely and, funny. And, and me. There's certainly a cartoon version of that whole scene. But at, it's so fascinating to watch you guys who normally we see being, you know, broad and comic because you're on SNL and you're going for the laughs as quickly as possible because that's the what the job dictates, doing something much different with humor and emotions in this film. And you're sort of blending the two, but then also making them just a little more subtle and putting things underneath the surface. Well, that's, uh, that's so nice to hear. And that was really important to us. And and we didn't know if we could pull that off. We felt like it was what we, um, you know, it's always what we wanted to do is make. D- Davis stories. Davis said throughout the process that he would much rather uh, people cry than laugh. Yeah, I g- got me. <laughs> I, a little, I cried a little bit. But in also the, in in screenings, like if I, you know, you have various audiences that respond to different things and. Yeah, every time like I I feel a moment that maybe was a laugh line in a, a different screening, but it does, doesn't get a laugh in this screening. It doesn't bother me nearly as much as if you know I, I'm feeling like people aren't emotionally engaged in the story. And it's a credit to Kyle; he really yeah. keeps uh, people you know on his side and feeling how heartwarming his his experience is and. Uh, Thank you. But I will say when those jokes in some theaters don't get responses that they do in others, it feels like a punch to my stomach. (laughs) (laughs) When did you guys discover uh, this tone and doing doing this with the movie? Because most of the times, you you know, you're you're pitching jokes. You're at SNL or even with your Good Neighbor videos. You are pitching uh, characters and bits that are that are made to garner as many laughs as possible. And I'm wondering if there was ever when you first started writing this, if you knew that this movie was going to be different right away or if that was something in the process of developing the idea. 
I don't know. I mean, I, I wrote it with our friend Kevin Costello, who who I went to middle school with. We both did. Uh, and I, honestly, I don't know. It, we uh, we had the concept, which is basically this kid who this guy who's obsessed with this TV show that's being produced just for him. And then the show ends, and his life changes, and he kind of enters an entirely new world. Um, we just tried to. We just wrote the story. I mean, like it, it was totally stream of conscious. I don't know that we were like aiming to make a broad comedy or a serious film. We kind of just wrote what what came naturally, and that's and that's what the movie is, truthfully. And so you and the guy, the guy that you wrote it with, and Dave, you directed. You guys, the three of you, have known each other since middle school. Seventh grade, Wagenheim. Any Wildcats here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, I thought we met Kevin and Marshall. No, he was, in, he was in Mr. Frank's class with me. Oh, see, maybe I didn't really get to know him until eighth grade, and you got to know him a little better in seventh grade. Kyle and I met in fifth grade. Does this matter? It's <laughs> very, no, very <laughs> boring. Uh, we didn't, people, love, people love these personal <laughs> stories. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't like each other too much. I didn't like. He was in Mrs. Olson's class. I was in Mr. Christian's. A- anyone in Ms. Olson's <laughs> class here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was threatened by Kyle. He was the class clown that I'd heard about. I'd never seen him uh, do his thing. But I felt like I was the little class clown of my school or my class. And they would tell these stories before class and, and fifth graders would just gather around him. And they were humorous stories. And it would be like, he would, they would be like fake autobiographies. It would be like... Um, I was born in the Appalachian Mountains with 17 brothers and sisters, and it's just crushes. <laughs> and one time, but, uh, and one time like, I like, be... try to just be a part of the circle, and immediately Dave looks up. He's like, uh, actually, Kyle, you can't listen to this. I was such an asshole. I'm so sorry. Um, Why did you do that to me? <laughs> do you want to talk about it? And yes. <laughs> Uh, but then in sixth sixth grade, I uh, was in carpool with Kyle going to Wagenheim Middle School. Yeah. Uh, and I got to really know Kyle's uh, sense of humor. And uh, it was just, he blew me away. And he was doing such a lot more advanced things than I was capable of doing. And I also wasn't that. Funny, and I, I think funny guy. Come on, come on, Kyle. Short. Tell them about it. You, you would do this bit where it was like an autobiographical <laughs> thing. What? Like, no, I, stop. I, I came it. from the Appalachian. <laughs> That's uh, that is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, anyways, Kyle and I connected pretty, uh, pretty well. Had a lot of same interests. Uh, we watched a lot of Saved by the Bell together. And, and step by step, and we still do. Boy meets world. The whole DGIF lineup, really. Where, where is this coming? What is, what is what this? Am, where am I going? With letting this? You go, I'm letting you go. We've gotten to TGIF, and I just want to see where this goes. I, well, what do you want to know? I have a tendency. It's really dark, really, all of a sudden. Like, yeah, I have a te- I have a yourself? tendency to just go, and you have to stop me when I'm Hold getting on. in on that. When I'm on that tangent, just or Kyle sometimes will do it or make fun of how <laughs> the question had nothing to do with where I'm going. Yeah, it'll usually be something like that followed by. But yeah, that was kind of how we came up with the tone of the film. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, I'm curious, you know, what was it like for you guys to, you premiered this, uh, where did you premiere this? Was that Cannes that you premiered? Uh, Sundance. Oh, Sundance, excuse yeah, me. But, but we played at Cannes you, as well. You, at, you played at Cannes. What's it been like, you know, is uh, meeting each other in fourth grade and sixth grade, now premiering a feature length film, which is a humongous accomplishment. You can see how big of an accomplishment a feature film is by just sort of how many production companies are at the mm. top of a film. And I think sure. there's like <laughs> five on this. That there means was, you have to I, go around and get a lot of people involved in the movie. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, is the question, I don't, I don't just like so the, I'm clear, so I don't go on a crazy tangent. Just how does it feel? How does it feel? We've known each other so long and now we've had, we've now, we've made a feature film and we, we premiered at Sundance. What does it feel like? To do it together. Yes. To, it to do feels, it together. I mean, like, I, I don't, this is, I don't like that I'm going to use this word, and I apologize. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It was magical. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Oh, we sat, just... we, we were in, we were in the, the Eccles Theater where the movie premiered, and, and we were cringing our way through the film, not knowing how people would respond, not knowing if we'd sell this movie. Uh, but we were we were there next to one another, kind of laughing at parts of the movie we thought were bad, laughing at parts of the movie we thought were funny, and just and just being, being with best the friends best with friends. each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll go one step further to say that it was 
very magical. <laughs> that was a waste. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> Where did uh where did the name Brigsby come up come from for a Brigsby bear? It was uh so I'm uh, yeah I'm 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 kind of obsessed with 80s and 90s children's television and and and, and movies and uh, when I just kind of started the the first document I wrote on on kind of the the premise of the movie I wrote down Brigsby bear and I guess it kind of comes from there are a lot of we, we we've since thought of like there are a lot of bears. In in kids entertainment, parents seeing bears, gummy bears, Yogi, Yogi bear. bear, Winnie the, the Winnie the Pooh, the country, the bear. Did you say the country, country bears. Bear? I didn't say country bears. Uh, bear jamboree is also like has the they're the ones that are the animatronic, the I weird thing, right? Yeah, is there? There's a bear in Chuck E. Cheese as well, right? Uh, there's one in the sh- in the Showtime pizza van, oh, and then they stripped it away from Chuck E. Yeah. Cheese. Um, <laughs> and you're an adult, right? <laughs> ha 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 ha! Very funny. You got something on your shirt. I'm not looking down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but there, then there's also like, I'm sorry to go into so much detail on this, but the uh, the alliteration within within you know Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Berenstein Bears, Brigsby Bear was just something that I put t- put together. Wow, dude! <laughs> I'm actually going to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the things that the film does that uh, that I liked is I think I feel like where most movies would make fun of internet culture and amateur home movie make amateur amateur movie making this film really celebrates it and you start from right from the beginning where we have your character talking into what we think is a forum do an internet forum and you twist that on its head and then you make all of these sort of uh, obsessions he has to be something far more emotional and, and meaningful. Was that something that you were intentionally trying to turn on its head in terms of how we normally talk about people on the internet and forums and sort of uh, home I, movies? I think all of these things, including like a person uh, putting up a video of a vlog or something like that or or the children's tv the way it's depicted in our movie there are things that we love we 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 love youtube videos of kids in the middle of the country talking straight to camera especially when they act as if they've got a massive audience and it's like hey guys sorry i haven't made a video in a while even though they've got like <laughs> 10 viewers uh i know yeah. where have you been <laughs> uh and same and like same with these kids shows and especially like um you know, locally produced ones and, and educational ones and religious ones and, and things that are only seen by probably a hundred people. Uh, but yet they, there, there is a lot of care that goes into them. And whoever's making that video is trying to be the Jim Henson. You know what I mean? They just don't have the means. So, uh, yeah, we didn't want to make fun of it as much as just do it justice because we care for it. Can I also say, side note, to all of the the research that Kyle's done over the years of bargain bin, like thrift store picking for VHS, he's been doing it for over a, a decade, and he has this extensive VHS collection with a lot of obscure religious, like this type of stuff that Kyle's talking about. Um, but that the work that Kyle did to just absorb all of the nuances of of those shows and and the aesthetic and the the characters and the mythos and the jargon uh that i think in itself built this idea unconsciously because as he's watching these films often, some sometimes i'd watch with Kyle but for the most part he would watch an entire like hour and a half of of just the worst regional children's educational show that there's no nothing unintentionally funny about. I mean, he's looking for that golden, like, two-minute moment to share with his friends or me or whoever. And if he doesn't find it, that video just gets thrown back in and may probably never taken out again. But then when he finds that amazing moment and shares it with it, it's like he's curating this experience for us. But that process of Kyle watching those videos by himself and really probably there's no one else in the world who maybe even owns this video or if if it is in a tucked away in a box somewhere he at that moment in time watching that video is the only person that that video is for in that moment and so i think Kyle having that experience over 10 years prior to to coming up with this concept 
probably led to that feeling of like, oh, what if this, what if this show was just for me? Uh, is that accurate? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> you really should have because it was so no, strong. It was great. It was pretty good. That was, was strong. That, was and great. that didn't go down the TGIF route. We didn't, didn't go. I didn't mention Boy Meets World. At yeah. The end of it. yeah. Uh, Kyle, I have to ask, how big is your, uh, as a small VHS collector, how big is your collection? And what's, what do you mainly focus on? The, these type of things. Uh, uh, critter movies, I like to refer to uh, them as. Uh, um, that's one genre that I, that I like, which would be like... And you're an adult, your you're a, an adult your ETs, man. Gremlins, and kind of the offshoots of those. Don't do this, dude. <laughs> We're live. I'm just trying to keep it light, man. So uh, I have fun sometimes. I don't know what the... We say, we've been saying I have 800 videotapes, but I started like counting. I was like, I don't think it's that many. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe 500, 400. That's a good collection. But Thanks. you also but, could have thousands if you wanted to, but you're very selective. He doesn't like, he's not going to just add VHS to add. Well, also, I live in New York and there's not a, not a lot of room in our apartments, oh, huh? Oh, wait, give him, give him a stand up and do the rest of your set. Not a lot of room for these tapes, right? <laughs> Hey, how's that right there? <laughs> I had to come back around. <laughs> I, really thought, I really thought that would have been easier. Uh, Kyle, I have to ask, before we move on to audience questions, I've, uh, I've loved you on SNL since you've joined. I'd love seeing some of your good neighbor characters or just some of your characters that I, I love from before appear on SNL. Like Me too. Chris and, uh, and your comedian that you were just doing there. And uh, Can we look forward to any of the, any of the other ones coming on? That was almost like a Kyle question, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for that kid. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we we love those. We actually just did a comedy tour at, in a few cities, and, and we're doing a lot of those characters. We did uh, the character Chris, you're referring to. Uh, he he closed every show and performed an original song. Uh, what is the song he's performing these days? Uh, Sing it. It's, it's called The Freak. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh-huh. It goes. <laughs> You got, can you do the it guitar? Sucks because, yeah. Uh, you think that yeah. I'm oh, under it, it, your control? Never, ever better. Sever the ties. <laughs> you think that I am still a child? Open me up. No. Uh, Daddy had to slap me? I'm not happy, mm. surprise. I, I don't need to do the whole right, thing. Right, right. But you, the, it's the a next lot better is, with the. You think that I am just a toy? Open me up. Play with me, because I'm broken inside. <laughs> Chris is it, Chris is working through a lot of a, a lot of emotions. Where did that character initially come from? I, um, I, I I think I was telling you back there, like because I was like, I know, I like those yeah. were a couple of my friends in high school that I bought yeah. drugs off. <laughs> yeah, there were kids. I, I mean, like you I don't bought drugs. <laughs> I can say what I want on this thing. Damn, yeah. this is cool. <laughs> Cool. Uh, <laughs> wow. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if I would want to mention these persons' names here. I'm gonna I'm gonna whisper in Dave's ear, and he can decide whether we say it or not. I don't even know. If Dave, I don't even know if Dave remembers him. Yeah, oh, for sure. I, I wouldn't say that name. But <laughs> <laughs> is it fair to say like that yeah, type yeah, of guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that type of guy <laughs> still exists? Because to me, that was a kid, uh, a guy from like 1999, like a new metal. Angry kid yeah. in like ninety nine to 04, townie yeah. sort of. I think I don't know. So I mean, like I'm sure. I, th- I think if you go to somewhere in the middle of nowhere, like some off away from a major metropolitan city, th- there might still be some Chris's hanging out. Still talking about Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> yes, that's a the movie good. is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get some questions <laughs> from the audience. Right here. Hey guys, uh, so I got to see the film at Rooftop Films um, a few weeks ago. You look familiar. Did yes. we talk? Yeah, we did. did oh, talk you, you're, you had a wonderful question out of the Q and A. And you're doing it again? Yeah, I have a different question. <laughs> Is it going to be the same? Were you wearing <laughs> Spider-Man gear that night as well? I was. Yeah. Yeah, because the movie was coming out. Yeah, yeah. It was a different Damn. shirt. No. <laughs> you are one recognizable <laughs> man. Thanks. Are you the most popular man in New York City? <laughs> wow. <laughs> might be. Might be. Uh, so don't ask the question. <laughs> don't ask the question. That's it. Uh, you got it. Don't get it. Okay. Uh, it's a Spider-Man f- question guy. All right. I forgot I was wearing a Spider-Man shirt that day. Uh, I was wondering. So in the movie, uh, there's a lot of older people that are like telling him to kind of move on from the show, like to grow up, kind of. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering uh, in the movie, like how uh, the theme was about 
maybe holding on to something from your childhood and like not really like growing up like yeah. fast or something? Well, definitely like, yeah, I like that idea of you can, you can embrace nostalgia and it, it not totally st stunt you. Like you can use a passion for a childlike thing and turn it into a, a, an emotional skill set or, or just, uh, you know, in this case, it's uh, James's ability to uh, find a, fa a passion for filmmaking, which will serve his adult life. But yeah, there was, the, you know, in the film, some of the ad adults think it's unhealthy because of what it represents in, in his past and that, you know, he needs to grow out of this. But um, yeah, oftentimes I think if, I mean, this is just, uh, Comic-Con is like a perfect example of a place where these are people who just love, um, you know, their favorite action hero yeah. or whatever. It's like, just embrace I, it. I, I, it I, I would say, because the, the whole like, um, are you a 90s kid or are you an 80s kid thing can be at times obnoxious. And, and there, there certainly is something to be said about people should grow up and, and not be into these things that they, that they were once obsessed with. But I'm, I, I am a person who is, who is obsessed with these things still. And in my room, ab above my bedroom, there's an ALF poster uh, and a Mickey Mouse poster. You, and, uh, does it actually work out for you? When you and <laughs> he has a girlfriend, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and, we, and I can do it whenever I want with her. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 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 Damn, that's cool, man. Yeah, it's actually really cool. Wow. Because it, it like, feels different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> with the and you do it with the Alf poster overlooking. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go I don't want to get too explicit. Um my point was <laughs> Say by the way, that's just that I'm I'm fine. Here. I'm I'm not I'm not actively hurting anybody. You know, there's there's nothing really harmful about being into these things and, and I think like if that's the case, more power to more power to the nerds. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Can we do that one more time look directly in camera and say it? This this camera? Yeah. This camera. Whichever one they want. More power to the nerds. Oh Kyle. <laughs> That's not a good look. Next question. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. Uh, hey. Um, one of the best things uh, about this movie is every time when James is watching the Brigsby Bear TV show. So I was wondering, how, was it difficult to create uh, those VHS tapes, like have the interlaced uh, VHS lines during oh, the oh, right. scenes? Well, uh, I will give a shout out to our director of photography, Christian Spranger, who was very key in... A, we both, all of us were like, we want to recreate this look as authentically as possible. He went on eBay and bought like five, uh, you know, 30-year-old broadcast beta, were they beta cameras? And uh, and so already you have a, a degraded look built in that you're capturing with an old camera. And then at the very end, we practically... Uh, once we had the cut of the show within the movie, we uh, put it on uh, on a VHS. We ex exported it to VHS, and then we would like do a second pass where we put that VHS on VHS, and then we did a pass where we have this like VCR that's designed to kind of bang around so you can get the 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 warbles and the tracking to go askew. We, we did everything uh, as. Um truthful to to the genre as po as we possibly could we uh practical mat sets and um obviously the animatronics so yeah we just we just wanted to do the show as as a person with that technology would do the show it's very fun it was like a group art project it's like how how well can we try to recreate th that aesthetic and how yeah how authentically can we do it, I mean, it was very fun how did you guys build out what the actual show looked like? Like what Brigsby looked like, what the set looked like, coming up with the man in the sun? That that was a long process of the, the design. It was just, a lot of it was, yeah, we, well, uh, obviously our, our art people helped a, a ton yeah. with that. Uh, Brandon Tonner Connolly is our production designer, uh, and he was But it's it, it was, the, one of the raddest parts about it was, like, it was a chance to just throw out any references you wanted to. So, like, Teddy Ruxpin, Chuck E. Cheese, um... I feel like for the for for the sun snatcher, 
you, a little bit of George Millay's A Trip to the Moon, um, Rainbow Bright, Care Bears. You kind of just we could kind of just send each other YouTube links back and forth of like little bits and pieces of things that would kind of inspire uh, but, the show. But also, we should also credit uh, the design shop, the Creature Design Shop, Stupid Buddy Studios in LA. They we gave them all these references and then they would give us a bunch of options for like what the facial features of the, the animatronic bear head look like. And we would just fine tune and say, Oh, we like this little part of this, but we want to mix that with this thing. And, um, that was a fun process, but that took a while. Even just coming up with like the blue shirt. It like, we went through so many, I knew what the bear was going to wear iterations of what his outfit. We kind of went with the classic, bottomless uh, creature look. But at one point he had like moon boots and like a, a vest and and it That's almost true. looked like too hip and we were like trying not to call attention to it or, or like, you know, point out like, oh, look at how retro this is. But it, it's always, a, that's a hard thing to... Oh, I'm I'm finding myself go on a, a tangent, and you got to just stop me when I'm doing it. What do you want us to do? You just got to go like wh- wh- the question was answered. Why are you still going? No, just go. <laughs> Let's, go. <laughs> Let's get another question. <laughs> Take it straight to Dave. Hi guys, uh, I had a question. I'll answer for this one for you. Okay, great. It was it's pretty actually. Talking. Yep. Good Perfect. thinking. Um, so I had a question about what it was like working in an environment where you're allowed repeats if you mess up versus an SNL where everything's live and if you mess up, like, we all see it. <laughs> you guys saw that? <laughs> uh, I, I, it's great. I mean, like, you know, we, we came from making internet videos and a lot of them were heavily improvised and, and we would just have a camera and do takes over and over again. And, and in, in that process of doing takes, you kind of find stuff that, you you didn't even know is there and I, not this movie was there wasn't a ton of improv per se but 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 like we were talking about earlier you know we can do uh, various versions of a read so I can do a sadder read I can do um, a goofier read on 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 anything so it's like it's it's nice I like kind of building the performance and having different ch- chances to to do it different ways the the biggest difference the question was for me oh sh- go ahead you was gonna do this. <laughs> So I was going to add, uh, the, when we make videos, which aren't live, which is the, you have the luxury of, you can take a little time to edit them. And the difference that we've, the market difference that uh, was so relieving in making this movie was that at SNL, you have, the turnaround is like, you get your script approved Wednesday night, you do pre-production Thursday, film Friday, edit Saturday. And so it's so hard to be meticulous with little things like if we were to want to design a creature for a sketch like you don't have all you don't have months to go back and forth with a design studio and and fine tune and be precious with every little nuance of a thing you just you know you your art department only has a day so you can't make a video that requires you to build some crazy you know animatronic bear or a or a world that is too intricate or whatever the people there are incredible at turning things around fast but it's still there's limits to what you can get and where you can go and um and how how much time you have to even edit or anything so the the for for me and for us i think the uh films just rushing videos as as opposed to like being really really precious about every uh subtlety within the the movie is that it was just such a relief. I promise your answer was longer than mine. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, before I go to uh, the last question, I have another question about a video that you made even before getting to SNL because you were talking about your internet videos. It's a, uh, I think maybe one of my favorite videos just on the internet that I will put on and show to people if they've never seen it. I've seen it multiple times, which is, I think it's called Sporty with the sports jacket. And you've sort of now taken that sports jacket and given it to the uh, stand-up comic character that you play on SNL, right? Well, uh, no. Am I missing? Bruce, Bruce wears a leather USA jacket. Did Bruce not wear a sports jacket? Never. I don't think he's done it on the show. The very first time I ever did Bruce at like uh, the UCB in LA, I, I think I wore okay, a sports jacket. Okay, maybe I'm confusing jacket. the two, sorry. Uh, no, it's all good. But yeah, we do, uh, that sports jacket still exists, and again, that's something we 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 did a live version of it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, 
and uh, still crushes. <laughs> well, how did that video come about? Did you just find that jacket, throw it on, and then Ab- start absolutely. Re- like playing? I mean, like, well, I don't know. Yes, we were I, I, some some thrift shop in in L.A. and I was just like, whoa, this is a crazy. For those of you who have not seen this video, I, this is a leather jacket that says sports on each sleeve, and then it has like an icon for different sports like football, badminton, volleyball, basketball, baseball. But it's all, it's so generic looking. It is like the most <laughs> basic. Yeah, and just the notion of a guy who's just into sports, like generally, it was, was really funny to us. And Dave is in, Dave is into sports. Mm. And I am, I don't, I don't ever want to say that I'm not into sports, but I just am not like at, at investing. You don't, fo- yeah, you don't follow any teams or you're not you don't know the players or the, so it is so we've always had we've riffed a lot yeah, over the years of like him trying to fit in with me and my friends as we're watching a game and Kyle's just doing a bit and we have fun with him and he's like coming up with a fake name he's like oh did you see what Milters did and we're like Kyle there's no Milters like who are, you, who are you trying what are you trying to prove it's okay if you don't like sports you, you, I, we still like you and for how special you are and then Kyle will be like, no, I like, I like sports. And then he'll continue on the... And so that, at doing that over the years, and then you found the jacket, and then we picked up a camera and, and just talked to each other in that way. Cool. Well, uh, last question from the audience uh, about Brigsby Bear. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, two-parter, kind of. Um, I read you shot this in Utah. How was that? And then how many days did they give you to shoot it? on location or did you shoot the whole film there we shot yeah we shot the whole film there 23 days it was like a five week about a five week shoot five weeks of pre-production there too so we were there about two and a half months uh how was utah it was great utah was wonderful it was uh um summertime so at times it was warm especially when you're wearing a bear suit um but overall it was it was so rad i didn't know what to expect but it's beautiful there's so many you know, we went hiking, we went uh, tubing down the Provo River, uh, met some locals, uh, want to say hi to Sully and the gang, um, <laughs> and uh, drank a lot of uh, 4% uh, beer. Wait, is Sully oh, yeah. a real person? Because that's like a go-to fake name for me. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, no, Sully is very Sully's real. In our mo- he, Sully made it into our movie. He plays... <laughs> really? He plays, he plays uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's definitely real, and... Uh, my only regret is that we never got to make our way to, uh, it was at the Salt Lake Bees, oh, yeah. the minor league the baseball minor league team. Baseball we were all, we really wanted to go. said we were going to go see a game, and we never did. But Also, you should give a shout-out to Cordell and BJ. They're Sully's friends. <laughs> <laughs> and the three of them, we met at a bar when we were first week of pre-production, and we were like, well, let's get to know these bars downtown. And we, like, bar hopped had a drink at each bar and then maybe like the second or third bar we met these dudes and we were wasted we were they got us wasted i think and then we went to, maybe to their to one of their apartments <laughs> <laughs> and that's when things got freaky and um that that's when things got freaky <laughs> and you should close your ears for the rest of this uh and then they ended up being so helpful that we became pals with them and then they um, would help us out throughout the course of the, like one of the dudes, the, the home, the biological family's home ended up being Cordell's dad's home. It was very fun to like just meet people, meet locals. Utah and, was wonderful. It's different than New York. People are excited to help <laughs> with your film. I'm, yeah. It's a, Q, can I just say, it's a Q and A. So like we're answering questions and we're trying to like, okay, can I, can I respond to this? Okay. <laughs> you told us to stop you. You made okay, such a good. point of it. That's true. That's good. Touche. Guys. Uh, I love the film. Congratulations. It opens this weekend, right? Brigsby bear. Yes. In, in New York and LA and uh, please if, if, go see it and also tell people about it because this is one of those things that if, uh, if you don't tell people about it, nobody sees it. And then, uh, Papa ain't happy no more. <laughs> Wait a second, because of the money? Papa's moved on from money to spinach. Anyway, are spinach you Papa? papa. Oh, papa. I papa. Okay. papa. But you're Papa. I'm Papa. <laughs> and, you, and you need the money. Exactly. I think that's a bad pitch for people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to see it so Kyle can get money. See it because it is... Papa. <laughs> no. 
This is a wonderful movie. It's a Congratulations, movie. you guys. Thanks okay. so much for being here. Thank you.